Hello, the President of the 73rd Session of the General Assembly has more than 20 years of experience in international negotiations, peace, security, defense, human rights, disarmament, indigenous peoples, gender equality, biodiversity and climate change. Another lazy person. It's just got so much. Slacker. <laughs> she has served uh, Ecuador as Minister of Foreign Affairs twice, Minister of National Defense and coordinating Minister of Natural and Cultural Heritage. Please welcome to the stage a very special keynote speaker, Her Excellency, Miss Maria Fernanda Espinosa Garcias. <clears throat> Thank you so much for this uh, very generous, wonderful introduction. And um, I'm the president of the UN General Assembly, so I'm supposed to be speaking from the podium, very serious and um, older, a little older. But let me start by congratulating the organizers for something that makes me so happy. And it is the sustainability part of this great event. Um, I was really with smiling and happy because the issue of plastic pollution and killing our oceans is a big thing. And this is very much connected to climate change. So when I heard that no straws, no single-use plastic bottles, I, I could really breathe. And congratulations for that. That is extremely important. So thank you very, very much for that. Um, really, I'm I'm delighted. I'm delighted to be here uh, among so many young leaders uh, from all over the world. And I was thinking, you know, I really hope that you're not thinking, oh, these old ladies standing at the podium, because I think that to be young, to feel young, to think young, is when you have more dreams than memories. And I do have more dreams than memories. And my dreams are about you and with you. So thank you. Thank you for having me here today. So dear YMCA leaders, members, and change agents, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. I was asking how many countries are represented here. I was told more than 100. And I, ha I wanted to start by asking a very simple question. Who among you have English as a mother tongue? Well, that's quite a bit, but not all of us. So just, just a gentle reminder that diversity is one of the most precious issues that we have, and multilingualism equally important. It's equally important because, you know, culture, wisdom, everything is conveyed through language. Uh, for me, it is, sometimes it is a little tough to speak, uh, to speak English. My mother tongue is Spanish. I'm uh, the first Latin American woman to be the president of the United uh, <laughs> Nations General Assembly. And I'm very, very happy. But beyond the language barriers, I, I think that we do, we do speak a common language. And it is the language of humanity. So that's what gathers us here today. It is really an honor and a pleasure uh, to be with you today to celebrate the 175th anniversary of the YMCA. I think that the, the energy in this room is fantastic. I was sitting at the front row here and I could just feel it. My heart was beating uh, just listening to the previous speakers. So I don't want to imply in saying this that we don't see the same levels of enthusiasm at the UN in New York. But I am sure my, my dear friend and sister, Jahatma, will agree this is a whole different level of energy, of commitment, of wisdom. Uh, I've just come from a, a brilliant discussion with some youth leaders, and now I see thousands of you from across the world, all committed to making social justice 
peace and equality a true reality. And I am, I have to say, I am already inspired. Over the past few weeks, I have been reading a bit about your history, your roots in this country, your humanitarian work during the First and Second World Wars, your pivotal role in shaping the United Nations from its earliest days in San Francisco in 1945 your contributions to the fight against apartheid and racism in all its forms, your advocacy on the climate crisis, the work you do on the ground to help young people living in poverty with HIV AIDS or without access to quality education or to education, simply put. All of you in this room and many more watching online are part of this history. I commend you and I thank you for what you do every day and for what you have done over this past 175 years. Thank you. <laughs> never, never say never, but this is a true never. Never underestimate your collective power. You have 65 million members. That's basically the population of the UK, which is an influential global player. So are you. You are very powerful. Some of you might be thinking, yeah, that's easy for her to say. But I wasn't born a politician myself. I was like you someone working at the community level with persons with disabilities, with refugees and migrants, with indigenous peoples of my country. By working with your communities, you have already taken the first step that I took on my path to the United Nations. And you don't need to work for the United Nations to make a difference. You already, already have power. You have power as an activist. You can use your voice like young people across the world have done on climate change, for example. You have power as a citizen. Politicians are more likely to support the Sustainable Development Goals, for instance, if they think their constituents care about them. So you have a very important work to do. You have power as a consumer. When it comes to issues, as we just mentioned, issues such as plastic pollution, one of my priorities this year, your personal choices can shape the behavior of companies. I am proud, for example, that we recently made the UN headquarters single-use plastic free. I thought it was an impossible endeavor, but we really needed to walk the talk on that. And I had a great ally when I said no more single-use plastics at the UN. It's really embarrassing. I had a great ally, the Secretary General Antonio Guterres. And now if you go, come to New York, which I hope you do, you will see that we are a single-use plastic-free environment. So, and whatever path you choose, and we have heard here for incredible youth leaders, doctor or data analyst, engineer, entrepreneur, biologist, blogger, poet, or parent, you can contribute to a safer, fairer, and more sustainable world. Dear friends, dear youth leaders, we have come a long way since the YMCA was founded in 1844. Back then, only a handful of countries had a life expectancy of over 40. Today, the global average is over 70 years. Since 1945, when the UN was established, we have seen dramatic reductions in poverty and the elimination of, of smallpox. We have seen women gain suffrage in virtually all countries and gender gap close, close in primary and secondary education, at least at the global level. And the UN has been a key part of that story. Through its peacekeeping missions, through its humanitarian agencies that feed, shelter, and protect millions of people every day. 
I recently visited the Zaatari camp in Jordan, which was a profoundly humbling experience. And though its role ha as a convener and a platform for states to adopt the Paris Climate Agreement and the Sustainable Development Goals, we have the potential to transform our world and save humanity. We must never forget these achievements when we hear the UN criticized for, for being a talk shop. Apart from anything else, talking is very important. We need to talk more, of course, but we also need to listen. As a poet myself, I am convinced of the power of words, of dialogue, of diplomacy. This is our work, our job. But as you all know, that is only part of the story. Across the world, too many people have been left behind. 600 million young people, a third of the total youth population, live in fragile and conflict-affected areas. Young people make up a third of those unemployed globally. And over the next decade or so, we will need to create roughly 40 million jobs per year just to keep pace with the growing populations. 40 million jobs every year. 15 million girls give birth each year. 15 million girls give birth each year, often due to barriers in accessing information and health services. 150 million young people have disabilities. Many of them face severe social and economic disparities in poor and rich countries. Every five seconds, a child dies, mostly from preventable diseases. Every five seconds. And too many young people feel their best hope for a better future is to move from rural to urban areas or across borders, often risking their own lives. And the gains we have made over the past 70 years are now at risk. Multiple crises, environmental, political, economic, and social, are driving conflict and instability around the world. If carbon emissions don't peak next year, the climate crisis will lead to even greater chaos. These problems do not respect borders. They cannot be contained by walls. Today, a drought in Asia could lead to soaring food prices in Africa. A market crash in Europe could precipitate a global economic downturn. Our world is getting smaller. Clearly, we need more cooperation, not less. But at a time when the case for multilateralism should be obvious, we are witnessing a rise of nationalist sentiment. Across the world, many governments are turning inwards, too preoccupied with domestic problems to invest in the global solutions we need. Some are actively trying to undermine our international order or to exploit the legitimate grievances of those disadvantaged by unchecked globalization. People, meanwhile, are losing faith in the ability of institutions to keep them safe and improve their lives. So what can we do? We can use our collective power. Whatever our differences, all of us want the same things out of life more or less, a safe place to live, enough food to eat, a good education, a clean environment, access to healthcare, the freedom and the opportunities to be who we want to be. And the good news is we have in the Sustainable Development Goals a blueprint for achieving that vision if only, and it's a big if, we can all work together, and that is where you come in again. This is, you are, the largest generation of young people in history. Between now and 2030, the deadline we have set ourselves for achieving the SDGs 
half the world population will be under 30. Many politicians see this as a problem. And yes, it is not without challenges, many of which you are actively discussing. The future of work, for example, but this is also a great opportunity. Your generation is highly educated and creative. You are willing to take risks and to challenge received wisdom. You were born as global citizens of an increasingly interconnected world. You understand better than some policymakers that the problems we face cannot be solved by one government or indeed by governments alone. You are instinctively multilateral. We cannot afford to exclude you from decision making. We cannot afford to have you as our partners on the ground. We cannot, we cannot afford not to have you as our partners on the ground. As president of the General Assembly at the UN, I tried hard to ensure that young people are involved in our work. I know that Jahadma is doing everything she can to make the UN less gray, but there is so much more we could do. Dear friends, ladies and gentlemen, the challenge I set for my presidency was to make the United Nations more relevant to people, and I ask you for your help. We need your solutions from the challenges we face. We need you to spread the word about the SDGs, and we need you to challenge us, to give us your ideas on how to make the UN more effective, more inclusive, more transparent, and more accountable. Next year, the UN will turn 75. And governments have agreed to mark this anniversary not by uh, looking back, but, but by looking forward. There will be a youth forum next year to discuss the future we want and the UN we need. The outcomes will, we, will be presented to world leaders at the anniversary summit in September 2020. Here's a wonderful opportunity for YMCA and for all of you. And if you are thinking, well, I'm not going to be able to go to New York, the UN will be initiating dialogues on this theme around the world, and I very much hope that YMCA globally, nationally, and locally will be part of that conversation. Finally, I am very aware that if we are asking you to do all these things, we also need to do more to empower you. That is why my constant refrain to government is, change the narrative on youth from one of problems to one of opportunity. Integrate national youth policies into broader development plans and civic, political, and economic, economic activities and boost funding for youth programs. In nearly all countries, the youth sector is underfunded. This includes youth ministries as well as youth organization networks. We need to invest in the capacities, agency, and leadership of young people, even as we call on them, on you, to work with us to address global challenges. My dear friends, at the UN, we often quote former UN Secretary General Doug Hammarskjöld, who said, the UN was not created to take us to heaven, but to save us from hell. These words are meant to serve as a bit of a reality check. But whenever I, he I, hear, I hear them, I think we can do better. You can do better. So I wish you all the best for the coming days and for the future. We are counting on you. And thank you once again for having me. Happy 175th anniversary to the YMCA. Thank you. Please can we show our rousing appreciation for Madam President.